All right, and we're back with another Pico CTF challenge. Nice netcat. Description. There's a nice program that you can talk to by using this command in a shell. NC Mercury Pico CTF 7449, but it doesn't speak English. So let's go ahead and let's grab this and put it in a shell. And I'll explain what the command is. So the command is netcat, hence the uh, challenge title. Oops, should have cleared that out. And netcat wants to be told a server to connect to and a port. So if this is connecting to the server, uh, think of it like you could have google.com there, you could have an IP, you could have uh, anything that you would connect to, and then the port. And what we get out is this long series of decimal numbers. And so when I looked at this, uh, I immediately noticed they're not very large numbers. They're all under, 125 seems to be the largest one, which immediately made me think of ASCII. And the reason I thought of ASCII was if you look at an ASCII table, so I got this just by Googling ASCII, you'll see this is an encoding scheme. And here's the decimal representation of all the characters on the far left. So for example, if we go over here, capital A is decimal 65. Capital B is decimal 66. Okay, so when we go all the way through, the largest number is 127. So I thought, let's see what this is in ASCII. And the easiest way to do that is, I really like this online converter right here. And the way it works is you can put whatever you'd like into any of these fields. So if we started over here, it would update the other ones. If we type in text here, if we replace things. So it's, it's live updating what we have. So let's put in those decimal bytes and let's see what we get. And the answer is we get the flag. Okay, so we'll submit the flag and we'll see if that's correct. And it is, hooray, we solved it. So I can see how this would be very frustrating if you're new to this because how are you just supposed to know what things, uh, what these long strings of numbers are actually supposed to be? And, and that can be challenging. So one thing that I found useful was looking up uh, a list of all the different character sets that have been defined all the way back to Morse code, the original. And if you just go down here through this, one, you'll, you'll learn a lot. I hadn't heard of most of these, but you'll see there's really only two in here. So ASCII, ASCII came before pretty much everything else that was used in computing and, uh, and it really, it took over in terms of popularity. It's, it's very simple and small. As you saw, it only goes up to 127, which is nice. Um, Unicode has a lot more characters because it has things like Japanese, Chinese, um, emojis, things like that. So uh, really you should know probably ASCII, maybe Unicode is a possibility, and then base 64. And base 64 is just if you took all the lowercase numbers, letters, excuse me, all the uppercase letters, and zero to nine. Those are the possibilities in Unicode. And sometimes it finishes with an equals. So when you look at whatever bunch of characters you have in front of you, try to look in and see what set it seems to be drawing from. And based off that, plug it in and, and see if it means anything. So another thing that I wanted to emphasize was Netcat. So Netcat is incredibly useful. And that's the entire point of this uh, challenge is to get you more acclimated with Netcat, which is basically the Swiss army knife of network utilities. It's very good for debugging. You can use it to transfer files. You can use it as a backdoor for example, relaying uh, commands across. So in, in the same way that right here, I have a terminal and I can put in commands, you can relay commands to Netcat from another computer. And I'd like to show you kind of a, a simulation of that. So I don't have two computers here, but what we'll do is we'll have two terminals. And I, I wanna emphasize, since you're going across the network, this, this could go all the way to China. The, the exact same method that I'm gonna show you. It just happens to be only going locally because we define it that way. Nothing limits it to being done locally. So we're going to use netcat. We're going to use the minus L flag for listen. It's going to listen for connections on the port. One, two, three, four is what we want. And we can see it's sitting there waiting. And then in our other window, we're going to connect to localhost, which means our local machine on port one, two, three, four. And we can see now they're both just waiting. So what's going on? Well, you can communicate. They've established a connection between them. So I say hi in the right one. And it appears on the left. Oops, forgot a question mark. No problem. How are you doing? Good. Okay, so that's a cute little example. How about something a little more practical? Maybe you want to send your friend a file and you don't want to stand up a web server or you've, you've just gotten onto some machine and you need to pull information off. Well, you can do that. So I have a little letter that I defined here. It says, hello, friend. I wrote this for you, Mike. And what we're going to do is we are going to pipe that in to our listener. And now he's waiting and he's holding that letter and he's saying, whoever comes next, I'm gonna give them this letter. And so the guy who's gonna come by, he's gonna take that content, he's gonna put it into a new file called out.txt. We'll run it. And there we go, we got our letter. So I hope you can begin to see how Netcat can be incredibly useful and, and definitely worth your time. And there are great resources here. Here's a SANS cheat sheet 
that you could Google if you were more interested in functionality. You can do things like uh, you can scan, you can use this as a port scanner, for example. You can grab banners, which can help you in exploitation by identifying exactly what software is running. It's just incredibly useful. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.